and uh, databricks what all joins you have used uh, coming to the databricks uh, we have used the several uh, joins depends on the use cases uh, we do use the inner join uh, that uh, is helpful to return the matched records from the both the data sets and we also heavily use the left outer giants that is for the lookup tables and uh, this can help you to check whether the particular uh, record was available in the lookup table or not and uh, if the, if it is available it can give you the matched uh, record and otherwise it can give you the null values and also we do have the right outer giant it is quite opposite to the left outer giant it can give you the matched record from the left table and it can give you the null record from the left table if the match records wasn't available in the left table and also we can have a full outer join so this will return all the rows from both the data sets unmatched rows have null values from the other data sets uh, like it is a combination of left outer join plus uh, right outer join we can get all the values and uh, if we we'll get the matched value you can you can expect the matched value if we didn't find the matched value it can give you the null as a value and also we do have a cross join so there is a kind of a cross product uh, uh, join of both uh, data sets and uh, sometimes if our join uh, our uh, data set have you know uh, has some uh, multiple values or like a duplicated value it might cause the cross join so we should uh, use this cross join effectively otherwise it will explode the data and it will cause the out of memory issues okay so next we can have a uh, semi join so semi join is nothing but a uh, uh, returns rows from the left data set uh, that have a match uh, in the right uh, data sets so it actually in the semi join we can have a flexibility to choose only the columns from the left table so it do not give you the columns from the right table as like in uh, left outer or right outer join so anti join it can give you the records which are not existed in the uh, right tables and uh, same like it can we can only select the left table columns it is it is something like a not exist equals uh, equal statement in the rdbms system and semi join is a kind of said exist yeah these are all the join types that uh, have uh, used in the databricks so what is the purpose of broad broadcast join uh, broker join is a type of join strategy was available in the spark and especially used in the distributed system to avoid the shuffling process so basically if you wanted to uh, join two data, data sets in a distributed system it has to go through a step of shuffling process so this shuffling process causes lot of memory cpu and io network uh, operations so that's a reason uh, the joins are costly in spark of even in distributed uh, systems so to avoid this one we have one strategy is nothing but a broadcast uh, join so in the broadcast join we can completely avoid this shuffling process by taking the smaller set of a data among the two data sets and we can broadcast all to all the executors and then the join can happen locally so so broadcast join can be used in case where one data set which be much smaller in size compared to other data set so the smaller in data sets will be uh, will be hashed and will be distributed to the all the executors so that the join can happen locally across all the executors and we can get the result uh, uh, result as output so this is the benefit of using the broadcast join so usually in the spark the if your data set is less than 10 MB by default it even consider it as a broadcast join that you can able to see it in the explain plan if you can use the explain keyword on top of your data frame operations you can able to see whether it is considering it as a broadcast join or, or uh, uh, other uh, join strategy you wanted to enforce uh, to this broadcast giant uh, you can also use some configuration threshold related configurations are available if you use the threshold related configuration it, if the particular smaller data set will be fall into under the threshold category it will consider it as a broadcast giant okay so almost like this having extremely black i want the count of records uh, 
where the customer name is blank. So what query you would be writing over there for this? Mm. You are blank. Uh, sure. Uh, so customer name is the blank, and we wanted to get the count of all the blank or null valued uh, records, right? Okay. Uh, so to do this one, I can use the where class, and I am going to filtering out the null records or blank values using the call else function. So I can use inside the where class, uh, where call else of name, comma blank and equal to the blank. So if it is a null, it will convert it as a blank value. And I am filtering only the blank values. And I can apply the count star and group by function on the name column so that I can get you the blank values and along with the count of the records. This is how I can do it in the SQL. And uh, similarly, what we'll be doing Python? Uh, yes, we can do the same. Uh, we can do the same in even the PySpark as well. In the PySpark, we can use the where clause or the filter clause to filter the null or blank related uh, uh, values. And we can apply the group function and we can calculate the aggregated uh, count star on top of the grouped values so that we can get the count of, uh, uh, count of blank or uh, uh, null values. So the similar thing we can do it in the uh, PySpark as well. We can also use the NF fill uh, so that it will uh, convert the null values to the default uh, blank values. And uh, we can apply the group by and uh, we can uh, get that value. Or we can also write the PySpark uh, SQL too. Do you So we can, uh, yeah, we have enabled the logging and alerting as well. So to enable the logging, uh, we have used the Azure monitor to, uh, or we can also use the log analytics. So in the Azure monitor logs, we can navigate, uh, navigate to the Azure data factory in the Azure portal, and we can go for the diagnos diagnostics settings, and we can add the diagnostics settings, and uh, we can select the categories as like, you know, which sort of the, uh, pipelines or logs that you wanted like pipeline runs or uh, trigger runs or activity runs and uh, choose the destination for logs like uh, uh, where we wanted to store that uh, logs and uh, we have to save that setting so that's how we enable the logging and for reviewing the logs uh, we can use the Krista query language case KQL uh, 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 for detailed uh, analysis and we can uh, enable the alertings we can we can do uh, in the Azure monitoring as well. Like we have to create the alert. So inside the alerts, we can create a, some sort of a new alert. So we can create the alerts based on the conditions, like you know uh, whether the pipeline failed, pipeline runs, or activity failed, or anything. Uh, we can select as a condition, and then we can choose some kind of an actions. So instead of action, we can create some sort of a emails or uh, SMS or some web uh, web group notifications. Uh, so the, this is how we can give that name and we can enable that alert so that if anything got failed in our pipeline so it will be alerted to our uh, mail system and we can go to the ADF and we can see the pipeline runs over there and uh, we can able to see what was the issue and uh, uh, based on it we can uh, we can apply the fix and we can uh, read on the pipeline so that's how we can manage the logging and alerting mechanism in the ADF. Uh, what type of cluster you have used in Databricks? Uh, we have used both uh, type of uh, clusters like transient and uh, uh, permanent clusters. So mostly the permanent and long-running clusters that we used for the development activities to uh, develop our code as per the business logic. And uh, that will be quite handy uh, to test our code uh, while developing and uh, it will be easy. For the production purpose, we have used the transient clusters to save the uh, cost and uh, to uh, make our run as independent compared to other uh, jobs. And uh, these transient clusters are a uh, good fit uh, in case of uh, in case of you wanted to run more uh, critical or uh, uh, important kind of uh, pipelines, and uh, it can save your cost as well. And it do not depend on the other uh, pipelines. So, uh, so for if you have any critical uh, jobs, but you can go for the transient cluster to save the cost or to get a maximum performance benefits. Thank you.
before the uh, on what kind of culture was it reacted on? As I said, uh, the long-running long cluster, which is nothing but interactive cluster. So, using this cluster, we can uh, we can do the development activities. Like, it can very handy to develop something, some code, and we can test it on the fly, and we can see whether the results are uh, meeting our expectations or not. So, and for the testing, basic unit testing, and all, we can use the interactive cluster. So, interactive cluster is nothing but we can uh, develop, and when we can uh, we can test on the fly immediately without uh, you know wasting time to launching the cluster and uh, launching the resources setting up the stuff and all so this will be very easy if you can interact to cluster it will it will take one time that uh, we can uh, switch on the cluster and from there on we can uh, use it as like interactive uh, purpose do you have any error detected or any can only pipelines to ensure whether the data is correct yes uh, we have implemented uh, some data quality checks in the pipeline so the data quality checks basically to check the to remove the duplicates if at all we have any and we are expecting some sort of a unique business keys so we are expecting those keys should be unique it should not be any duplicated or some uh, null or blank kind of a values so if we are finding any such blank values we are collecting those stickers and we are uh, storing it into some temporary or uh, staging kind of allocations and uh, from there on we can uh, send it for the upstream application for further uh, reviews so like as we do have some uh, data quality checks and also we have some uh, data quality checks on some numerical uh, values which we, in which we are expecting some sort of a currency values and currency uh, value should be uh, greater than zero if you if you get some records anything like a zero or uh, something so we are capturing those records and we are sending back to the uh, upstream applications to review those uh, in a further uh, stage so uh, depends on the uh, business use case we can develop some sort of a quality metrics and we can implement in our pipeline and uh, that's how we can uh, ensure that our data should be accurate and uh, uh, more uh, trustworthy trustable uh, from that the how we are the how we are validating the data like uh, whatever we are processing from on premises to the google table whether it is correct or not so to verify the data is correct or not when we are loading the data from source system to the uh, cloud uh, so mostly we have implemented the audit uh, tables so these are kind of a tables which can load the uh, table records uh, a table uh, record counts uh, from each stage like before uploading uh, to the on cloud we are uh, storing the entry into the table by saying how many records that it are uh, processed at that moment and once we uh, uh, landed to the cloud we are also checking again like how many records that we are in the landing zone staging zone and uh, target zone so this is how we are ensuring that all the records are matching in the from the on premise and uh, uh, cloud uh, uh, data centers and uh, even uh, in any of the our layers like bronze silver and the gold layer we we can able to track the uh, records very easily like whether the records are getting missed out or anything was happened uh, in between so if you if we have such a requirement we can also build some sort of a audit kind of a tables so these tables can have an entry with the uh, uh, records processed on each and every layer so you said putting your data is not missing for day take yes how much time take for the entire process to get into the course uh, yeah. uh, i said uh, per source it will be around like 50 to 60 gb kind of a data so to process this 50 to 60 gb kind of a data hardly we are taking around uh, 10 minutes uh, that is my sla and if you wanted to process further uh, like uh, in a low time we can also do that by increasing the parallelism and by uh, you know enabling the distribution and uh, ma making more partitions so we, we can able to uh, make that one so according to me uh, so the sla 10 minutes is uh, good for this one so we went ahead and we okay with that and uh, anything you have recommended on vacuuming site to vacuum the data or to the clean the data uh, yes, we have uh, written the vacuum uh, vacuum delta tables. So vacuum actually removes the old or unreferenced files from the delta table, which is actually to save the cost and to improve the performance of a uh, table. And uh, 
we must uh, specify some retention period in our uh, pipeline so we are keeping my retention period is around uh, 30 days so uh, for every 30 days we are uh, running this uh, vacuum command so this vacuum command will run for every uh, 30 days and will remove the unwanted uh, uh, files are unreferenced to files so this is we actually done the automation process using the workflows uh, in the databricks so there we have created a job and we have created a cluster and everything uh, to do to uh, to run the uh, vacuum command so we need to understand the minimum retention periods and uh, we also monitor and uh, we need to also we, we need to set the right cluster configuration to run this job and uh, yeah if you want to keep that data away to that. So if you wanted to read the data from a table or a file, we can use the data frame API, something like spark.read uh, uh, the format of the file or a table like JDBC connection, and we can use the load as a function uh, so that it will load the data from the respective sources to the data frame. And if you wanted to write the data frame to the uh, file format or some table location, we can use the writers like df.write.write. Uh, the format, whatever the format that you wanted to save, like CSV, AVR, or Parquet, and we can use the save. And we can, uh, if you wanted to create a table, we can also use like save as a table.